Hi there. In the next few videos, I'm going to be diving deep into the creation of each one of these kicks. We're going to be looking at Kick2, the synthesizer which I've used to make them, and then all of the processing followed to really finalize the sound. So starting with this video, we're going to be going over the Big Room Kick. Just before we go over it, I'm going to play back the kick so you can hear what it sounds like. And let's get right into it. So let's first take a look at the synth settings and parameters. So of course I'm using a sine wave for the pitch modulation oscillator. And the pitch is being modulated from a really high frequency, in this case C10, which is 17 point almost 2 kilohertz, down to the mid-range punchy frequency, which is 392 in this case, within 3 milliseconds. So when I hover over this node, you'll see on the top right just here, it says 0 0.003. This means this decay is over three milliseconds. Then it's just one simple line, plenty of energy in the mid to low mid range over here from almost 400 Hertz down to the sub fundamental, which is a G1 at 49 Hertz. And you can see from here to here, it's another 100 and roughly 70 milliseconds because this node is at 171 milliseconds. So the decay here lasts quite long, which means it's given us a lot of punchy energy because there's a lot of frequency content going on here. Now I'm going to load up an EQ and open up the analyzer just so I can play the kick and you can see what's going on with the frequency analyzer here. I'll just move it to the side for the time being. You see that there is a little bit of energy here, but a lot of energy from around 400 Hertz and below and there is a substantial amount of energy in the low sub fundamental frequency. The reason for this is due to the amp envelope. Now in big room kicks they're usually very sub heavy and there's a lot of punch and they last quite a long time. So what I've done is made the intro fairly soft with a fade up and the decay fairly long. So you can see that the sound is cut off at 464 milliseconds. This is quite a long kick relative to a lot of other genres. So that's what's generating this long sub frequency. Of course, I've also layered a sample, which is simply just giving us a bit of a transient. So I'm going to solo the sample so you can hear it. It's just this. Look at the frequency content mainly around there. There's a bit of low frequency, but it's just a short transient. All together, without the sample. Now, let's talk about the processing that I've fed it through. Of course, there's a little bit of an EQ. You can see that the only bit of EQ here is just a dip around 200 Hertz, because like I've mentioned in one of the previous videos, those frequencies can sound very boxy when you're making a kick drum. So a little bit of a dip, no compression within kick two, but there is limiting applied. So the limiter is ducking the volume as soon as the kick hits, quite a significant amount, and then turning it up quite quickly towards the end of the kick drum. So really we get a reduction in volume around here and an increase in volume towards the end. If we look at my settings as well, the look ahead is set to none, which means the transient of the kick the beginning of the attack is going through uncompressed and then the limiter is kicking in. Also, the release time is fast, which means the kick drum is releasing from the compression quickly and we're getting a heavier sub frequency. If I change these settings to high and slow, you can see we get a tiny bit less of a click. And with the release time at slow, we also get a little bit less of a sub because it's taking longer for that sub frequency to rise up again. It's a small difference, but it's there. Now the difference is somewhat 
kind of reduced by the processing going on after the kick. So after the sound exits the kick, it goes into this effects rack. And in this effects rack, we have an EQ in which I'm boosting the transient from about seven kilohertz up by four decibels. The reason why I'm doing this is because again, big room music is very dense. There's a lot of high frequency instruments, synthesizers, vocals, bass, guitars, you name it. So we need to increase the high frequency content in our kick to help the kick come through all of those other elements in the track. Now, of course, this also depends on the track that you've placed the kick in. So sometimes if the track doesn't have as many high frequencies as what I just mentioned, you might want to turn those high frequencies down a little. And then that's all I've done with the EQ. Then we've got a transient designer. It's kind of like a compressor that allows me to boost or attenuate slightly the transient of your sound and the sustain tail of the sound. So the sustain tail in this case would be the sub frequency. So I have turned down the transient ever so slightly to compensate for the boost in high frequencies with the API EQ. So listen to how the sound changes as I move this up and down. It reduces the transient significantly. it increases the transient significantly. So I had it at around minus one. I could go a bit further around minus two. Of course, the sustain would do the opposite. Boost the sustain tail or vice versa. Reduce it. And how quickly it does this is dependent on this and on the curves. You can see the sharp curve reduces it towards the end, where a smooth curve kind of does it smoothly throughout. So I'm just going with a sharp curve because I only want to reduce the transient very quickly, just at the beginning of the kick. That's all the processing and that is the big room kick. So I hope you've gained some ideas from this. Um, remember, a big room kick has to have a lot of mid-range frequencies, that punch that we've spoken about in a previous video. And by mid-range, I mean roughly from 100 to around 400 hertz. That's why we've got this long decay curve on the pitch here. And then it has to have a long sub. So I'm making the kick last 460 milliseconds, which is fairly long for a kick drum. Then some limiting, some boost in the high frequencies and some reduction, some softening of the transient at the end. And we have our big room kick. This EQ, I only put it there so I could show you the graph on here. It's not actually doing anything to the sound. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. In the next one, we'll be going over the creation process for a deep house kick. See you there. Take care.